to you by Apostolic Iron. Greetings in Jesus' name. I'm Bishop Chester Wright, and this is the next episode of Provoke to Ponder. I have uh, refrained as much as possible from making any comments or references that uh, could be could cause a lesson to be dated to a specific time or situation. But uh, I am recording this on Father's Day. 2024. And uh, appropriately, as the Lord has directed, uh, we're going to talk about praying like Jesus prayed. Uh, and I, I want to go through that with you for a, a moment and show you what I'm referring to. Uh, there are many instances in the Gospels where Jesus prayed. One of the most notable one is uh, where he was praying after he had, after they'd had what we call the Last Supper, and he and they he washed their feet, and then he taught them uh, what we would call three old chapters. It was one session of ministry, John fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. He prayed with them in John 17 before he went out to Gethsemane and prayed for himself where he was taken uh, by the mob and then brought before the high priest and Pilate and was crucified. And in that, that's one of the longest prayers, if not the longest prayer that we have uh, recorded of the man Christ Jesus praying. And um, six times he, he addresses God in his prayer, and every single time he calls him Father. John 17, 1, he says, Father, the hours come, glorify thy Son. John 17, 5, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self. John 17, 11, Holy Father, uh, keep through thine own name these that you've given me. John seventeen twenty one, Father, thou art as thou Father art in me, and I in thee. And then John seventeen twenty four, he said, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me, etc. And then the last verse of that prayer, John seventeen twenty five, O righteous Father. In fact. Uh, it's it's not a cumbersome study. It's just a matter of doing the time, but going through the Gospels. And uh, actually, you would have to include the first half of chapter one of Acts in that time frame. And uh, if you went through all of the times where the Lord the man Christ Jesus directly referenced God, either in referencing God to uh, the individuals he was talking to or in his personal prayer, whether it was prayer that there were others around or not. Uh, he called God Father more times than he referred to God or address God in using any other term. In fact, it's not even remotely close. He referred to God as Father. He called God Father approximately 90% of the time. And every other possible way he could have addressed God, the man Christ Jesus, the humanity addressing the deity, uh, he, all, all the other possible ways were less than 10% of the time. Now, you may not be a uh, believer in one God if you're watching this, and, and, and I'm happy that you're watching. Uh, but the problem is for those that I, with whom I fellowship most of the time is we have a tendency 
to identify calling God Father with those who believe in the Godhead being three distinct, separate, distinct persons. And so, therefore, we think uh, that if we call God Father, that we sound Trinitarian. That is so sad. That is really, I'm sorry, that provokes me. That is so sad that you're so insecure in your own understanding of the Godhead that you think praying like Jesus prayed means that you believe in doctrine that you don't believe in. I'm not trying to be unkind here, but this, uh, this is called provoked to ponder. So my question to you is, which is what I want to provoke you to answer, is why? Why can't you call God Father? And again, people have all kinds of different reasons for that. They really do. Uh, the one, of course, the, the one that's most frequently used is it sounds like you're saying you, that you believe that Jesus believed in, in, in two separate persons in God. No. The Bible says unto God all flesh will come in prayer. That's not an exact quote, but there's a verse that says to that. Unto thee shall all flesh come uh, in prayer. And uh, again, that's not an exact quote. But all flesh prays. Hebrews 5 says concerning Christ, who in the days of his flesh, he offered up prayer with strong crying and tears. Deity does not pray. Flesh prays. And those who say they believe in the same God that I do sometimes have a real problem differentiating in their own minds and hearts and spirits and prayer between the humanity, which is Christ, and the deity, which is the Lord. Uh, Christ died. Deity cannot die. The Bible is very specific on this. It says God was in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5. God was in Christ. Christ is the humanity. Christ is the Logos made flesh. Christ hungered. Christ got tired. He slept. Christ suffered in pain. Christ died in my place. Right. Now, there are people that make the name Jesus equivalent to Christ. It is not. No. The Bible says that, uh, that Stephen prayed to God as he was dying and said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He didn't say Jesus Christ received my spirit. Why? Because the spirit, according to Paul, the spirit is the the Lord is the spirit, the spirit is the Lord. And Acts two thirty six says that God hath made that same Jesus whom you've crucified both Lord and Christ. Now, this house that I live in is known as the Wright's residence because we live here. This house takes on the name of the people living here. This is the Wright's residence. Uh, I was raised as a kid when I answered the phone at home. Wright's residence, Chester speaking. My dad was in the military. That's how we were taught. We were supposed to answer the phone. I've got out of that habit, to say the least. But uh, it was the Wright's residence. Now, being in the Navy... I lived in eight different houses by the time I graduated high school. Actually, it might have been more than that. Uh, but each while we were living there, the name of that house was Wright's Residence. The body of the man Christ Jesus, the body which is Christ, was named Jesus because that was the name of the one residing in him. 
<clears throat> yes. So when Christ prayed to the Father, it wasn't God praying to God. Deity does not have to pray. God doesn't pray to God. Humanity prays to deity. Well, he was praying to the God in him. You're saying he was praying to, to the God in himself? Well, don't you believe you have God in you? Who do you pray to when you pray? Are you praying to the God in you when you pray? Well, I'm praying to God. Jesus said, I'm in my Father. My Father's in me. Because he was praying to the Father. That doesn't mean he was praying to the God within him, but he wasn't denying that God was in him. So therefore, this, this idea that if you call God Father, that you're Trinitarian only proves that you don't understand the Godhead. But I spent many, many years not being able to call God Father. It had nothing to do with the doctrine of the Trinity. It had everything to do with the fact that uh, my dad, who was my hero, wasn't there when I needed him because he was deployed. I never held that against him. But I grew up learning how to solve my own problems because my dad wasn't there. I was in prayer one day and the Lord showed that to me. That I had transferred to him this absence of my father when I needed him. So I had a hard time calling God father. Because of that transference. I know other people that can't call God father because their fathers weren't very good men. They mistreated them. Some were abused by their father, physically, mentally, emotionally, and, and some even sexually. And so they could not, they transferred to God these problems with their father and they couldn't call God Father because they didn't have good thoughts about Father. All that may be, all that's well and good. Okay? And it's something you may need to deal with. But Jesus taught us to pray in Matthew 6 and Luke 11. Our Father, which art in heaven. He is our Father. He loves us. He trusts he trusts us. He, want us. he wants us to trust him. And if you have a problem calling God Father, in the best way possible that I can say this, I pray that today you will be provoked to go to prayer and between you and the Lord, determine exactly what it is that prevents you from calling God Father. When, I, when he finally showed me this, and I made peace with all of this, that is the number one way that I refer to God, either talking about him or especially in prayer. If I'm praying in English, I will be praying Father. I call him Father. I call God Father. Because I want to be like Christ. I want to pray like Christ prayed. I want to know the Father like the man Christ Jesus knew the Father. And he prayed that I could. I would encourage you to read John 17. And see exactly how that was the case. There were two prayers prayed on the cross by the man Christ Jesus. Both of them started out, Father. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And Father, into thy hands, I commit or commend or trust, entrust my spirit. And then he died. I believe that it is very, very positive and necessary for you and I to be able to call him Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray today, that the grace of God will provoke you 
for you and the Lord to deal with whatever reluctance you have in being able to call him your father. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen.